Hello YouTube, this is Terrell. Today is Tuesday, January 17th, 2012. This video is to help you understand the magnetic portal connections that connect the Earth to the Sun and that also connect the Earth to this heavy mass object that's coming in. In fact, we're going to learn that magnetic portal connections exist between the heavy mass object and all the planets in our solar system and that explains many of the symptoms that we're looking at. So I wrote my paper for the Terrell's 2012 newsletter and this video is uh, being made at the same time. While I'm fresh in my mind that I just wrote the paper then I can share this information with you. Magnetic portal connection explained. A better understanding of the 188 day cycle and the March 22, 2012 warnings is gathered by realization that the Sun and Earth are tied together by magnetic portal connection. Read through the NASA article and then continue below. So this is the NASA article that I'm talking about right here. Read through this article so you can understand passive uh, conduits and active conduits and the, uh, the flux transfer events that take place through the magnetic portal connections. Okay, I just gave a little bit of the article right here with the link. Visualize the magnetic portal connection as a large umbilical cord tethering the Sun and Earth together, allowing varying amounts of magnetized subatomic particles to pass from highly charged areas from the Sun to lesser charged areas in the Earth on regular eight minute cycles. The slightly smaller portal connection attaches, detaches, and reattaches to our planet due to regular Earth rotation, just about a thousand miles per hour. The magnetic portal connection has a series of internal conduits that are active and inactive, with a percentage of active conduits depending on the proximity to the Sun. In other words, the highest percentage of internal conduits are actively transferring magnetism through the magnetic portal when the Earth is in perihelion position nearest the Sun. The lowest percentage of active conduits is present when the Earth is on the far side of the orbit at the aphelion position farthest away from the Sun. So this is a proximity thing. As the Earth gets nearer the Sun, then the more and more of those internal conduits become active. As the Earth is, as that magnetic portal connection is stretched, like an umbilical cord being stretched, then a lower percentage of those conduits are active. So during this time, because the Earth is very near perihelion position to the Sun, we're receiving extra amounts of magnetism. Not only that, we're beginning to orbit in the direction of the heavy mass object, which you're going to see. This is a small little diagram that I created for the newsletter that helps uh, depict what's going on here. So you've got Jupiter and Saturn, and, and uh, this is Venus, and the Earth with the little moon here, and the heavy mass object coming in. And what we're seeing is that um, there's a connection between the Sun and the Earth, magnetic portal connection, and a secondary magnetic portal coming from the heavy mass object. Not only the Earth, but Saturn and Jupiter and the rest of the planets, because this heavy mass object is a star, and it's coming in for an orbit around our Sun, and it's trying to wrestle polarity control of these planets away from the Sun. Even though it's too small to do that, this heavy mass object is trying. So it's an arm wrestling contest between a small guy and a big guy where the Sun is eventually going to win, but whenever the heavy mass object has proximity in between the Sun and these orbitals, then this heavy mass object has the opportunity to create magnetic havoc and gravitational havoc on these planets, which we'll see. The HMO siphons off increased magnetism reaching perihelion position nearest the Sun. So as the, the heavy mass object is coming in for perihelion, remember that it's going faster and faster and faster and the magnetic portal connection is getting shorter and shorter very quickly and more a higher percentage of those internal conduits are becoming active giving increased potential increased magnetic potential to the heavy mass object who then can inject that extra magnetism into the earth and that's what we're seeing now the diagram shows how the sun and all the planetary bodies are tethered together via a series of magnetic portal connections the chakras of your human body are also t tethered together through a series of conduits the very same way. Okay, then I want to show you that picture which is right here. The chakras of your body. 
heart chakra. Notice how they're tethered together the same way with, with portal connections so that they share energy. Imagine these are planets, that the heart chakra is the sun, and that these planets are in orbit around, being connected together. Okay, now I'm going to disagree with the interpretation here of these things. You have three upper chakras and three lower chakras. And then this center chakra is actually broken because woman should be laying across this way, her three chakras. She's been taken out. Three uppers represent your higher self. That's a spirit, blood, and water witness. Your lower three chakras are your lower self, the spirit, blood, and water witness of the lower self, lower self and higher self. And these planes are physical, emotional, mental, intuitional, spiritual, um, etheric, and esoteric. These are the seven um, planes that the human being lives on simultaneously through these chakra relationships, through the chakra relationships inside a human body. Okay, so back to our paper. Um, as the man is a microcosm of the larger universe. The heavy mass object is increasing velocity every minute reaching perihelion position nearest the sun, which means a higher percentage of internal conduits are becoming active each time the sun and the sun heavy mass object magnetic portal connection reconnects. The heavy mass object is then able to inject increased amounts of magnetism into all of the planets in our solar system, but depending on proximity to each celestial orbiting object. The Earth was orbiting away from the heavy mass object until December 18, 2011, when our planet reached outside orbit position. However, when Earth then rounded the corner to begin gradually orbiting in the direction of the heavy mass object, which is how I was able to predict the increase in magnetic pole migration, mass animal deaths, earthquakes, volcanoes, and other Earth changes just about 11 days later than last year. This explains why Saturn developed a superstorm after passing between the Sun and Leo constellation, just like 30 years ago. As Saturn orbits around the Sun about um, 29.5 uh, Earth years. The magnetic portal connections between all the planets also explain why Jupiter's core is liquefying as all the planets in the solar system are heating up due to their relationship to the heavy mass object. Okay, so when we go back to uh, then you have stories that are connected. They're, they're down in the, uh, the description box about Earth's core, uh, Jupiter's core, how it is liquefying. And the reason would be the same reason that the Earth's magma is taking up more space because it's heating up. The Earth, Jupiter's core is heating up because of receiving extra magnetism because of the magnetic portal connection. Same thing with Saturn and the superstorm. What's going on here? You're going to go back in time and notice that you're looking at 30-year cycles. 30-year cycles because, and I've seen multiple stories on this, it says that, see, Saturn is right now in Virgo. It just passed through Leo, and it has this storm. And it says, guess what? It happened about 30 years ago because that's one Saturnic year. It happens each time Saturn passes in front of the Leo constellation. Why? Because that is where a heavy mass object is coming from. And that's the same thing that's happening with the Earth on the 188-day cycle. It's happening and giving directionality to the Leo constellation the same way. So we're looking at a pattern of evidence here that's pointing towards the Leo constellation as the place where this heavy mass object is coming from. Okay, I'm um, continuing on. Uh, the uh, magnetic portal connections between all the planets explains why Jupiter's core is also liquefying. That's why we would need to go to the, uh, the next story. Uh, we already looked at Jupiter, yeah, we already looked at Saturn. So we're seeing signs, not just that, if you go to Mincer Armour Bossage paper to Cornell, April 11, 2011, he's going to talk about Uranus becoming super active. For the same reason, we're seeing a pattern here. Okay, Earth was in the center of the backside orbit on, December, on September 15, 2011 with the, with the Fiji event, the 7.3 which represents the last event on the 188-day cycle. That marked the time that Earth began orbiting away from the heavy mass object to actually stretch the magnetic portal connection until reaching outside orbit position on December 18th. You see, that's also the time that Earth was behind the Sun as the giant magnet. So uh, the Earth was actually being protected by the Sun from the effect of the heavy mass object. So we have an internal 
effect through this magnetic portal connection, but we also have an external effect because of the subatomic particles coming from the heavy mass object itself. See, the sun is releasing subatomic particles constantly. It's shedding its outer skin. Sub the subatomic particles are also being released from the heavy mass object. It's just they're not under ignition. That's the important thing to realize. NASA is warning about subatomic particle counts. They're warning about we're, we're orbiting into an, a photon belt. I should have included that in the links. Um, this is another symptom of heavy mass object. Subatomic particles bombarding the outside of our magnetosphere while the I influence of the internal magnetic portal connection. We see you have opposing forces here working, which kind of contradicts uh, that each wants to uh, um, outbalance the other. The, out the outside effect and the internal effect, because increased magnetism actually wants to strengthen the magnetic the magnetosphere. So the magnetosphere should be getting stronger by having dual magnetism, but it's not working that way because of the external effect. The quadrillions and quadrillions of subatomic particles bombarding the magnetosphere is causing the outside of our magnetosphere to weaken and weaken and weaken, and NASA is also warning about a weakening magnetosphere that's getting holes in it because of the external effect. A, st a stretching magnetic portal connection reduces the percentage of active internal conduits, which decreases the amount of magnetism received by the magnetite and metals in the earth core, which in turn reduces the amount of heat energy transferred to the circulating magma as the earth tries to find equilibrium. We now see an uptick in all these earth change symptoms because earth is now orbiting in the direction of the Leo constellation, which is shortening the magnetic portal connections by 10,000 miles per hour, then 20,000 miles per hour, then 30,000 miles per hour, and so on until March the 22nd. The magnetic portal connection is a straight line between the Sun, Earth, and the heavy mass object, like last year on March 11, 2011, with a 9.0 event that shifted Earth axis by 4 inches. See, we're moving towards uh, the, the uh, gravity trough that exists between the two stars. That's what's going to cause the March 22nd event. That's when the magnetic portal connection, instead of being a sharp angle like it is now, is going to be a straight line. So each time that magnetic portal connection disconnects and reconnects, it's more it's the diverging magnetic portal connection. The angle is widening, right? And the amount of, of magnetism we're receiving from the star is increasing. That's what's causing the core to heat up and increased seismicity, increased volcanism. Okay, Earth is in near side orbit to the Leo constellation for six months and then on backside orbit behind the Sun to the Leo constellation for six months which drives the Earth, divides the Earth into two equal parts, then draw a line through the Earth and the Sun at the alignments and you have divided Earth orbit into four equal parts. Backside orbit marks the time that Earth has two sets of magnetic portals flip-flopping on the same side of our planet. All of a sudden on December the 18th, 2011, the heavy mass object magnetic portal connection flipped to the outside of our planet to begin diverging away from the Sun magnetic portal connection each time the heavy mass object connect uh, connection reconnects. The magnetic portal connection angle between the Sun and the heavy mass object tethers will continue to grow right up until the straight line at the March 22, 2012 alignment when the Earth passes through the gravity trough connection, uh, uh, the Sun and gravity well and HMO together, just like on March 11, 2011 and February 27, 2010, when the Earth axis shifted. Um, four and three inches respectively. The science and historical precedents say the Earth axis will shift five inches or greater on March 22, 2012 if the heavy mass object is still between the Sun and the Leo constellation on that day. Now, I guess we're going to see. Then there's uh, the articles here. There are plenty of them on the internet. You guys can look it up. Showing that the Jupiter core is liquefying and Saturn superstorm. So this is just two bits of evidence pointing to the fact that there's a heavy mass object coming. This is part of the symptoms that I see. Of course, it's magnetic pole migration, which is, I was expecting to see stories of how it's increasing, and guess what? Right on schedule, I'm seeing videos coming out of how the magnetic pole is increasing. Because the sun is in a is in a arm wrestling contest with the heavy mass object, and trying to maintain polarity control requires the sun to, to exert increased force, which is bending the magnetic poles in order to keep the Earth straight up. That's what we're seeing is a, a, uh, a battle between these two stars for the magnetic polarity control of our planet. So that's the magnetic portal connections explained. Um, you guys can, can do your own research and see if what I'm saying makes sense 
or doesn't make sense, but this is the way that I see it. So um, we'll see you next time.